come into Lewis High Street today to look at some things about Tom Payne. So this is Lewis House and he lived here at one point. It's an amazingly big house, but he actually lived in about six different places uh, throughout Lewis. And um, yeah, that was one, or well, that is one. Another one was Bull House up here. The majority of um, sort of connections to him run through the top of town here. So I'm gonna just take you to a few of them quickly and tell you a little bit about his uh, death, which is really sad, really sad, and sort of, sort of tragic for him, but quite interesting as well. So we'll like go through a couple of things and just talk a little bit about his life in Lewis. Um, but yeah, let's get up here first. So this is the White Hart Hotel here. And there's actually a little sign there. We'll have a look. And this was to do with um, something called the Headstrong Club. Uh, it was like a group of debaters for the time um, that he sort of set up or became a part of, I think, uh, when he arrived here. And he lived here for six years um, and he was selling tobacco, I think, strangely, and doing some writing. There's the pub, The Rights of Man. There's a picture of him up there as well. We'll have a look at that. Uh, and Right of Man is one of the um, main papers he wrote that people know. And the other one was called Common Sense, but they, both of them were utter masterpieces of their time. They still ring true today. Um, although he's still just sort of like being ignored. Those same principles are being ignored now as they were then. Uh, but yeah, so he debated down there, he'd have walked down this high street. I actually uh, even did a story about um, him in Lewis in my book. And one of the short stories is him um, and his meeting at that club, walking to and from his house. Uh, but yeah, I really, I'm pleased with that one. It's like setting up on a winter scene. But we'll head a bit further up, I'll show you his house where he was married. And then I'll show you a monument for him um, and tell you a little bit about his time here. So here's the Brewer's Arms and just beyond it is Bull House. And um, Bull House is his home, um, or was his home. And that is uh, now the Sussex Archaeology, or what's it called? The Sussex Archaeological Society. We're now housed in here. Uh, and the Masonic Centre is just there, that one with the blue pipe there. Probably not connected though. <laughs> uh, and then this is the Westgate Chapel. And he had a room in the back here that he did a load of um, writing in. That little balcony up there is a part of his house. So when he was here, he um, married a woman called Elizabeth. Uh, I think it was the daughter of John Bull from Bull House, uh, which is the name of this house. And then he sold tobacco here. Um, I'll have to have a little flip round. I don't know why I'm even filming. <laughs> so yeah, he uh, lived in this house with Elizabeth and married her in St. Michael's Church, which is handily right there <laughs> where that little clock tower is, um, just beyond it. That's where he got married. So. Uh, I don't know what it says about him here, not much now. It's interesting because a lot of people, different famous people from throughout time, Walter Godfrey, the other guy that moved the um, altar at Hamsey, the one I keep going on about, he also lived here and was also a part of the Archaeological Society, um, which is quite interesting. But from what I can tell, marriage wise, it seems like he didn't really have a very happy marriage. The things he wrote kind of imply that you know it was a bit of a kind of prison. I think he was saying sort of after the initial, in most relationships, after the initial kind of like love happiness bit, it's just whether or not you can tolerate each other. <laughs> He's quite funny. He's actually a very funny bloke. He really was. Um, but yeah, here's St Michael's Church, and he got married in here. I don't know if it's open. I've been in a few times. I won't go in today. 
Um, but yeah, it's not really that important as much as like he just got married here. And he was in Lewis for six years. Then he went off to America. Then he came back to France and then he came back to England again. And then he went back to France and then he was imprisoned, I think. Um, it was quite an awful lot of uh, moving around he did. And uh, yeah, the real sad bit in my mind is sort of like how he ended up um, at the end of his life, which was not in a good state. He really didn't have a good time um, health wise and sort of people that it's hard to know. It seems like he was kind of mistreated by an awful lot of people who were just really trying to take his money at the end of his life. But then the flip side is they, they kind of claim that um, he was taking advantage of them. Who knows? Like, I'll probably put my faith in pain to be honest over these other people, but I don't know. Um, none of us really do because we're not, you know, we weren't there. But anyway, yeah, so he lived there. He lived uh, also in a few other places around Lewis in over various different periods. But there's a, uh, we're going to go up to where his little monument is now. And that's kind of interesting. I'm trying to remember the name of the person who ended up because he was brought back. His bones were brought back from America. I cannot remember the name of the people that dug him up. Um, but yeah, they dug him up and brought him back. And a vicar that belonged to Lewis and to, I think to St. Michael's Church randomly, and to a centre in Brighton somewhere, he got hold of some of what was left of Thomas Paine um, and he was a vicar here and no one really knows what happened to him precisely because like people seem to have split up bits someone claimed to have his rib cage another person claimed to have his jaw someone claimed to have his skull a bit of his brain and like it's all very strange and not sort of thing we do now but they did then and here's an interesting place this is the bowling green and um it was here that he was playing bowls with somebody and um, they remarked that it was something to do with um, the new king being apt for the job because he had a lot of the devil in him. And then Thomas Paine replied something along the lines of, is there such a thing as a government that doesn't have the devil in it? <laughs> <You know? laughs> he kind of got it even then, I think, more than, more than anyone. It's his first kind of like political quip, apparently, that's been recorded. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's funny to think that he was just playing bowling right there at some point, and there's the castle up there. And then, yeah, my thinking has been that, you know, it does, no one seems to know whether or not any of him was buried or not. Uh, and they, they didn't seem to, because he was a Protestant, I think, or I'm not quite sure on that, but I know that he was kind of like more about free thinking and he did not kind of agree with the church. I'll explain a bit more about that towards the end. Um, whether he got kind of buried in consecrated ground, which I don't think he did or was allowed to. Um, but I'm wondering if this guy that got hold of some of what was left of him may have buried him here. Yeah, I wonder if that was not just his memorial, but if he was actually buried here. I don't know what tree that is or how long. Could that be a couple of hundred years old? I wonder if that was planted over him, over what was left of him. I think it was like his skull and hand or something like that that this guy had. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of hopeful that he really actually is here. You know, like I can't think of anything else. I've looked all around St. Michael's churchyard. There's nothing in there. No one else seems to know what happened to the rest of him, but I'm just hopeful that this chap in Lewis, this vicar as well, mind, you know, got hold of some of him and actually gave him a proper burial here. And my thinking is maybe it's here. This is the only memorial for him. I don't know when it was put up and it looks very kind of crap and cheap, doesn't it? But um, that would be quite a good kind of cover, <laughs> you know, for not letting people, what's this? There's like a massive bit of stone here from like an old monastery or something. I'll just show you I don't know why that's there. <laughs> Very odd. 
but anyway, yeah, I want to do something for him, get him some flowers or something and put them down. But yeah, that's the Battle of Lewis sign over there. And there's his memorial. It's a very nice spot, to be honest. So if, it, if he is here, God bless you, Thomas Paine. Although you didn't want anything to do with him, I think, towards the end. Don't blame you either, mate. <laughs> like, yeah, when he was on his deathbed, uh, he'd been moved around so much at this point. Uh, and was kind of running out of money and um, anyone that kind of cared for him. I think it was almost like two or three occasions, priests came in and people came in saying, you know, do you want to, this is right when he's dying, do you want to um, sort of like give your life to Jesus, that kind of thing, you know, um, uh, confess your sins, that kind of, and he just basically told them to piss off, like, um, <laughs> no, I kind of understand, after everything he'd done for the um, world, and then to end up like that, it was kind of a cruel fate for him. Like, it really wasn't pleasant to end his life that way. And then like some dick kind of like wrote a uh, kind of hit piece book about him, which has been disproved since then. You know, I just think um, he was an incredibly contentious figure to uh, the powers that be, you know, authority, fake authority, he just, rip straight through it with logic and reason you know the age of reason <laughs> he was just an amazing guy and god he wrote so much did so much for all of us and then ended up in this terrible situation was dumped in some sort of garden in america sounds like they actually did a moderately good job for him and the woman that put him there sadly said that she would try very hard to keep him um there and that he wouldn't she wouldn't allow his grave to be desecrated and then this guy turned up with the spade and brought him back here and dug him up and all his bones were split up and some of him was held in an attic no it's this kind of awful like really awful thing to, to happen to someone like that you know someone so great but then i think of them um, they even made this point in this book that i was reading about him that it's like um it's like that end of braveheart bit where they say you know like uh Longshanks had his body ripped into pieces and sent to the four corners of Britain, but it did not have the effect that Longshanks desired <laughs> and kind of like um, brought in more support uh, rather than kind of made um, made everybody think, oh no, like, you know, <laughs> how terrible. And I wonder if that's a similar thing to pain. You know, his body's been split up and put everywhere. Uh, so hopefully there's a part of him wherever all of those pieces are now. And I hope that that is one of them. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you a few places. This is just one of the amazing people, the truly amazing people that have kind of um, come through here. Uh, utterly incredible bloke, really is. You should look into his life more and we should all celebrate him more. He's um, a man after my own heart rather than kind of like these um, drossy politicians that are around today. They're, oh, they're horrible lot, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did find that interesting and you're interested in Lewis and other kind of stuff, I am trying to get a few more people involved. It's been five years now, and I think because I've been kind of outspoken about many different subjects, my channel's been really hidden away from everybody. <laughs> Pretty sure half my subscribers are just YouTube sort of like offering me one but it'd be great if you could subscribe give me a chance to make some more give me some incentive to make some more videos about the other things that have gone on here and perhaps put a bit more um effort into making them um you know better editing better sound better everything but like unless there's an audience to speak to there's just not much point so but there's an awful lot of interesting stuff that i've put down i think so anyway i hope you do too um really kind of odd things that you might not credit initially but keep going and you'll see how much it's supported by a network of puzzle pieces. Take care. Please subscribe. <laughs>